So traditionally, creating equations in Microsoft Word has kind of a bad reputation. That is not surprising because in the past, in older versions of Word, you need to click like 10 different buttons to be able to even create a first equation. And then you need to click another 20 buttons in order to create the correct symbols or operators, vectors or matrices. So it is not surprising that creating equations in Microsoft Word has been overlooked. However, over the years, Microsoft Word has been upgrading more and more features into its equation editor. And now it's really, really powerful. And to fully utilize all of its features in a very efficient way, you want to completely utilize the keyboard and not go and click 20 different buttons. The real power is in creating shortcuts. So in this video, let's start with creating simple equations like the one you see on screen over here. In Microsoft Word, there's two types of equations. These are called displayed equations and these are inline equations. These are exactly typed the same way. The ones inline are automatically squashed. Just to show the difference between these, you can actually click the down arrow over here and it can change to inline. You can see that it will automatically squeeze these equations into the same as these inline equations. Or I can take an inline equation like this and change it to a display. However, it won't look nice because it's forcing an inline equation to look like a display equation. It does do the job, just I don't know when would you really want to do this. So let me undo and make it look pretty first. Um, before I show you the uh, shortcuts in creating equations, just as an example, I'll show you how in real life this would be typed. So for example, I need to type the exact same thing on an object moving in one dimension is I will use my shortcut over here and I will type my equation like this. I can go on the next line more generally and utilize my shortcut. As you can see, I immediately call out an equation that is in a display format. I can also type inline equations over here. Although the A and B can be simply italic, it does not have to be in an equation environment. It's a little bit overkill, but just for demonstration purpose, there it is. So you can see, so this is sort of the normal speed I type in with the equation, utilizing the shortcuts and various different tricks in the new syntax, which we'll get to in other videos. So before we continue, I want to mention these are the operating systems and Word version that I'm on. So what you see in your computer may look a little bit different from mine if you're using a different operating system or a different version of Word. Some of the layouts that you might see or some of the inbuilt or default shortcuts would look a little bit different. In particular, if you're using Windows, most of the time when I say command, it usually means control in Windows. But most of the features in all these videos, I think it will be very similar in other versions as well, if not identical. So there are three different ways to create equations in Word, but all of them you need to position your cursor at the correct position. So if you want to create an inline equation, your cursor just have to be in the position that you want to create. If you want to create a display equation, you want a blank line and it will automatically come out as a display. So I want an equation under this line. Hit return and have a blank line available for that equation to pop in. So what I call the traditional way is you just go through and click to the menu items. First you need to lift your hand off the keyboard, reach to your trackpad or your mouse, click insert and go on and click equation and insert equation or you can just click that symbol that will work as well. And if I want an inline equation, you just have to put your cursor right over here and click insert you can just directly click this as well and you can start typing over here. However, first of all, you have to lift your hand off the keyboard and secondly, there's several different clicks uh, you need to go through. So Microsoft Word actually comes with a default shortcut to do that several number of steps that I just show. So if you have your Microsoft Word open at the moment, you can already give this a try and hit Control equal if you're on a Mac or alternate equal if you're on Windows. So actually this will not work for me in my work document right now. That's why I'm not showing you uh, because I have opted for the third option, which is creating my own keyboard shortcut. The shortcut that I have created is actually command equal and equal again. So first of all, it might seem like this is much more complicated than the original default. But the thing is, when you really want to utilize the power of Word, you want to create shortcuts for a lot and lot of actions that you're going to do. So as you know, there's a limited number of keys on the keyboard. You start to run out of different symbols. So what we want to utilize is what's called a prefix. I'll show you in a second. Over here, these are all the shortcuts that I use most frequently. 
a simple inline one is command equal equal and then I created number equations that the shortcut is command equal one and then all the different variations with equal two three and four and I'll demonstrate how these look for example if I just want simple equations I can create several ones just like this However, a lot of the time we want numbered equations. So I will go with my shortcut that looks like this. These numbering will automatically pop out. And just to emphasize these actually do exactly what they behave if you reorder the equations. So let me label these equations. I want to pull equation four just before equation two. These numbers now seem screwed up now, but I can actually update the numbers. And as you can see, the equations stay there, but the numbers will reorder themselves properly as you really want to do. But sometimes, as you can see, these equations are quite crammed together, especially if you have a big fraction or a big integral. So I sometimes want equations that actually space out a little bit. I have indeed created a shortcut this way. As you can see, the numbering keeps continue going on. But in this shortcut where I use command equal to, there are six points spacing in between each line. This is useful if you have large fractions or even vectors or matrices that have to go in here and you want to space them out. And finally, sometimes you need the equations not to be center aligned. For example, this, as you can see, these are all center justified. If I want them left justified, this is more appropriate. For example, this looks much better when they are justified like this. Sometimes we do want them to be aligned at an equal sign. So you can create a fourth version where the equal signs, as you can see, are automatically aligned. And this time you can have these equations aligned on their equal signs. So in a future video that I can probably link down below in the description, I will go through how to create each of these numbered equations this way. Uh, but for today, I just want to explain why I am using this particular shortcut. It is up to you how you really want to decide your shortcut. But if you're following through these videos, you can just use the same shortcuts I do. And when I use the shortcut, you'll have the same shortcut on your key as well. So having said that, now let's go in and create the shortcut. What you need to do is go on to tools over here and go into customize keyboard. This is where you assign all your customized keyboard shortcuts that you can do. So you will open up this dialog. You want to scroll down to all commands and type in equation insert. Or you can just type in half of it and you can start scrolling down and find this. And down here, you already see that I have a current key. If you have a default shortcut, it will probably show up. Let me just demonstrate that to you. For example, if I want to bold a font, you see that Command B or Control B is already a default shortcut over here. So you might see your default shortcut showing up there. Back when I first started experimenting with this and the moment I realized I actually needed more diverse ways to create different formats of equation, when I'm running out of keys, I deleted the original one. So you can just click remove over there. So let me go back to equation insert. So I can either type half of it and scroll down to equation insert or I can type the whole thing. As long as you get here, that's fine. So if you have a default over here, you can remove it. For example, I'll show you. I'll remove this one temporarily and you can create the new shortcut. So over here, what you're going to do is hit your shortcut. Now we want that prefix that I was mentioning. So what you're going to do is hit command equal and then click equal again. As soon as you click assign, now you have a new shortcut for your equation. So let me explain what does this prefix mean. It means that when you, you actually use the shortcut later, you just do what exactly what you just did. You will hit command and equal again. So just to show you all the different ones that I did. So if I just backspace, if I hit equal again, it will tell me that I have assigned to equation insert, which is exactly what I did. But let me go backspace and do one you see that I have assigned to equation underscore V1. Uh, that is a customized one where I have the numbering format. If I do two, you see that it's currently assigned to equation version two where I have six points below. Three is where I have six point below and left aligned and four where I've assigned two six point below and equation aligned at the equal sign. So all this will go through in a different video, but now you see what a prefix key does. And in particular, once you have assigned one of them with a prefix, it won't allow you to assign a shortcut to any other actions where you just have the prefix because now the first part where you do command equal is basically a prefix and it cannot itself be another keyboard. For example, um, 
I've never tried this. Let me try to assign this and what happens. There you go. <laughs> so it says it's assigned to the first key in one or two more key command assignments. So if I actually click yes over here, um, I'm pretty sure I don't want to continue because it will erase all the other prefix shortcuts that I've created. So I'll click no. So we're done over here. So you can click OK. And now you can try it out on anywhere you like. So if you want a display equation underneath, you can hit command equal and then hit equal again. This will create an equation. You would first press down command and then you press down equal. Nothing will happen yet. Now you can actually release command and then hit equal again. The prefix will actually be remembered over there and you don't have to hold down command. Personally, I, what I do, a personal pro tip over here, for speed, what I usually do is press down command and then double click on equal sign. So that would be really fast just to show you. Here I go. And uh, there is the equation. So what I just did um, is I press down command and then with my right hand just very quickly double tap equal sign. So in the first glance you might think that command equal equal looks much more complicated than just control equal. It is a little bit but it's a very minute difference because what I do is just command and double tap equal. It's just negligibly a little bit longer than control equal but it allows me to assign these prefix to a different option as well. So in the next videos, I'll go through how to create these numbered equations, which is really the most interesting part of all this. But before we go, let me show you a bonus tip that really utilizes the power of shortcuts because going forward, we will be creating a lot and lots of shortcuts. So it's probably nice to create a shortcut for creating shortcuts. So if you remember, every time you need to create a shortcut, this is what you need to do. You need to click tools and you need to go down to customize keyboard. But it would be nice if I just have a shortcut that I can immediately go to this screen. So instead of clicking through those, I can command exclamation mark and I will be on this screen automatically. Now, I honestly do not remember if this particular shortcut comes with a default system or have I created this shortcut for um, creating shortcuts. So in case it is not a default shortcut or you're using a different operating system or a different version of Word that doesn't have this default, uh, let me show you how to create the shortcut for you know creating shortcuts. So again, you want to go to all commands. The other categories basically is if you know a particular action, for example, if you want to close or if you want to exit, if you want to open a file, if you want to save a file, if you know where these are, you can click on a category to uh, narrow it down for you. But most of the time, I just scroll to all commands and type in my best guess of what my action is. For example, I need keyboard shortcuts, so I'll guess. So I'll start typing keyboard and I find something that makes the most sense. So this is Tools Customize Keyboard. As you can see, I already have my current keys, which is command exclamation mark here. So this is how you create a shortcut for creating shortcuts. Uh, so let me click OK and show you if I do command exclamation mark, this brings up this window and escape will bring you out of the window and command equal equal will give me a new equation. So that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed this video for various tips on shortcuts and creating a shortcut for inserting equations. Of course, this is just the beginning. If you want to type a full document of mathematics equations, you will need, for example, to learn all the syntax uh, that comes with Microsoft Word. But don't worry, all the syntax in Microsoft Word is extremely intuitive and very easy to learn. If you're already familiar with LaTeX, you're in luck because up to 70%, I'll say, of the syntax in Microsoft Word is very, very similar, if not identical to LaTeX. And for the other 30%, they are very intuitive. If you have never learned how to type LaTeX before, I think Microsoft Word is extremely easy to pick up as well. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to type math completely without leaving the keyboard and never touching your mouse using this language called Unicode that Microsoft Word accepts. And I'll show you all my tips and tricks in how to type in Unicode to type math as fast as possible. So this is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like below. And if you have any questions regarding any of this, feel free to leave a comment below. Or if you have any suggestions, both about either future video ideas about typing math in Word, or if you have any tricks that might help anyone else watching, do leave it below. Or if you have any suggestions for future video ideas regarding typing maths in Word, you can leave that below as well. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you very soon.